Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Yeah, you're not allowed to do this to me. <laughs> you, you are not allowed to emotionally compromise me at 10 o'clock at night like this. I feel as though I don't even know where to go. Like this episode was so fucking good and sad, bruh. Like it's just, so for those of you who don't know, right? In the video game, when Joel and Ellie show up at Bill's compound, Frank's already dead. Um, he, he commits suicide. Like, uh, I think he committed suicide like a few months before Ellie and Joel show up. There's this whole different interaction where um, Ellie kind of connects with, with Bill on like this weird level and then Joel kind of reconnects with him. There's this awesome level where it's the first time you the character is being introduced to the final form of an infected basically when you get the bills it's 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 an action-packed set piece whereas in the show they took a completely different tact i am divided because on one side of my brain i i absolutely love that this episode gave us the backstory that I always wanted in the game. Because when you show up there, you know there's this history between both Bill and Frank, and it's touched upon if you go around and you search for the little notes, but for the most part, you don't get that backstory. And then the entire action set piece happens at the school, uh, then you're out of Bill's compound and you are on your way down the street to your next destination. I like that the show continues to give us snapshots of the past. I also like the fact that it it shows you just how fucking ruthless Fedra is uh, in regards to like how the government basically operated once civilization collapsed, where it was, hey, we're taking you from point A and we're moving you to point B. And if along the way we discover that we've reached 100% capacity at point B, we're just gonna march you off into a field and shoot you. This is a continuation of what I basically told people like two weeks ago, when people were asking me a question like, I don't understand why it is that the federal government would kill its own citizens. Control, <laughs> they lost control. The only way to regain control is through violence because if it's one thing the United States military knows how to do, it's perfecting the art of violence. When suddenly you have politicians and, and, and presidents and people who've never served in the military no longer in power, and you put the military in power, all the military knows how to do is blow shit up. They're not gonna build you a dam. They're not gonna build you a rec center. They aren't gonna like, even Ellie makes fun of, the, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, Fedra school, where she's like, Fedra school doesn't teach you shit outside of, you know, how they fail to contain the, the, the pandemic. Like, this is what the military is basically gonna do. So I like the fact that we got like extra dialogue on, or an extra scene to show just how shitty Fedra is, but there's no way you can't convince me that this isn't basically Nick Offerman from Parks and Recs. Like, this is Nick Offerman from Parks and Recs. This is the version of him from an alternate timeline where, dude is downstairs in his fucking bunker. He is in his bunker, chilling. He is watching the government collect all these people, moving them along like, mm-mm, not me, fuck all that. He's got his guns, he's got his generator in the backyard for power. I love the fact that like he's smart enough to basically go off and start all that shit back up because you have to think about it on like a certain level. If the government rolls into your area and they shut down the power stations, depending on the type of power station that that area uses, all of those resources just basically go to waste because the government's not gonna come back and get those. Like they have to abandon that and then move on to a completely different area. So him going over to the power station and just turning the oil back on, turning that bad boy back on and having power back at his house again, genius. Absolutely fucking love it. I also like the progression of his relationship with Frank, where they start off a little bit antagonistic. He's a little bit curious. Then Frank starts playing like 
the Hamilton version of the song on the piano and Bill's like, nope, 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 nope. He sits down, he starts playing a more, the, the, the more somber melody, the way in which it's supposed to be. They connect off of that. Then you get every couple years where they spend, I think like maybe like the first three years together. And then Frank's tired of his shit because they're basically the only ones inside the compound. And from there, the relationship evolves. It gets a lot deeper. It gets way more serious. Then you get the introduction of both Tess and Joel. Love the fact that they brought back Tess. Yes, give me more of her because she is fucking fantastic. I know in the first episode I said that she didn't really feel like Tess, but during that second episode in the way in which she went out, classic Tess, actress grew on me, fucking love her. I love the fact that we're seeing more of her, her interacting with both Bill and Frank. Joel basically seeing the perimeter and telling Frank that, yeah, couple couple years one or two this fence is gonna collapse like you're gonna need to you're gonna need i forgot what he said he's like titanium barbed wire or something along those lines that'll last him the rest of his life i like the fact that we see that frank basically took car frank bill basically well bill and frank basically took cars and put them where the wall was going to collapse to create a natural barrier around the compound and then in the main entrance slash exit they have the barbed wire upgrades that Joel basically suggested, but he also listened to Joel when Joel said that they're gonna come at night and they're gonna wait for when the conditions are really shitty out, like when it's raining or something along those lines. And my man had like flamethrowers around the entire property. Whole town had flamethrowers, not only flamethrowers, but he had like, like chains, like, was it chainsaws? I think it was like chainsaws, like on the ground. There's no way you're approaching the the wall or the fence like you you're funneled into like this one spot where bill can just pick you off for a moment there i really thought that the show was going to go in an opposite direction and bill was going to be the one that died and frank was going to be the one that welcomed ellie into the town because bill's story in the game kind of just ends where we never see him again after our ellie and joel leave so i like the fact that he got a definitive ending here i just kind of wish that we got that maybe it's maybe, maybe it's not maybe it's not bill maybe what i'm missing is the fact that i really wanted them to introduce a bloater because when you first run into that bloater it is fucking terrifying maybe that's what i wanted i wanted them to introduce just how terrifying the bloater is but then when you sit down and you think about it we've got what nine episodes eight episodes ten episodes we just got the clickers. Maybe they want to save the bloater for later on when they reach all the way out west, which is acceptable because we got a whole lot more emotional. <laughs> we got a whole lot more emotional things on the way. Um, yeah, way more emotional things, especially next week. Um, next week, the question is going to be asked. How'd you know that that guy was faking? I just knew. Whew, I can't wait for that. There really isn't a lot to jump into with this episode because like i said it's not an action set piece there wasn't a whole lot of like scientific background information it was basically like a relationship between two guys a relationship between two guys that started in the apocalypse where one guy shows up <laughs> an extrovert shows up into an introvert's life and makes the introvert realize that there are some things in the world that are worth protecting and i like the fact that he leaves Joel that note, but in the most Bill way ever, where he's just like, you know, if it's for Joel or whoever, whoever finds this, like, you know, um, me and Frank are basically gone, like take any supplies that you need, like we're no longer here. And then at the end, it's like, you know, if this is Joel, you know, make sure that you protect what's worth protecting. And he's talking about Tess, but we know that now that Tess is gone, that basically falls on Ellie where Joel's gonna, basically his job now is to protect Ellie and get her where she needs to go. And he's heading out west to go find Tommy, so I'm absolutely going to love it. But let me know what you thought about the episode. I freaking loved it. Like I said, this is an emotional roller coaster for me because um, I love the relationship. I think Nick Offerman did a fantastic job as Bill and bringing Bill to life. Uh, like if I would say that before we got the casting or before I started paying attention to the casting for everyone, I really thought that Nick Offerman, and it proved to be correct, that he was the perfect choice to play Bill. 
just perfect human choice to play Bill. And that was proved true with this episode, and I can't wait until next week. Once again, we're doing the one week sit down and wait for a new episode of The Last of Us. But let me know what you thought about this episode. Comment down below, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.